While testifying in a Russian court Wednesday, WNBA star Brittany Griner said she did not intend to break any drug laws. She's been wrongfully detained in Russia since February. Tina Krause has more on her case from London. It's the sixth time U.S. basketball star Brittany Griner has gone before a Russian judge, but the first time she's testified about the drug charges she faces. The Phoenix Mercury player described making a grueling 13-hour flight to Moscow from Arizona back in February while recovering from COVID-19. She told the court her rights were not read to her when she was detained at the airport after Russian authorities say they found vape canisters with cannabis oil in her suitcase. She added she had packed in a hurry. I still don't understand to the day how they ended up in my bag. I did not Reiner says she was questioned for hours, but the interpreter translated only a fraction of what was said before officials led her away in handcuffs. It was more just her telling me surname, sign, really short words. Uh, she didn't explain the content of the paper. Like I didn't know exactly what I was signing. Reiner has pleaded guilty, but her defense team argues she was prescribed medical marijuana to treat pain from injuries. The two-time Olympic gold medalist faces up to 10 years in prison. It's unclear how long the trial will last, but the Russian court has authorized her detention until December. Tina Kraus, CBS News. Meanwhile, the Biden administration has offered a deal to Russia to bring home Greiner and another American, Paul Whelan, who has been detained in Russia since 2018. This deal was proposed weeks ago, but Moscow has yet to accept. A White House official reached out to Greiner and Whelan's families and plans to speak with them tomorrow. Brittany Greiner, just to remind you, pled guilty to drug charges and has been imprisoned, as we said, since February. Paul Whelan was accused of espionage while attending a wedding in Russia four years ago. He denies any wrongdoing, and U.S. officials say he was subjected to an unfair trial before being found guilty in a Russian court. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he expects to communicate with his Kremlin counterpart for the first time about this and other issues since Russia's war on Ukraine began. We, of course, want to see those who are wrongfully detained uh, be released and be able to return home. At the same time, uh, it's important that we work to reinforce the global norm against uh, these uh, arbitrary detentions, against what is truly a horrific practice. For more, CBS News correspondent Christina Ruffini joins me now. Christina, you followed a lot of these negotiations. How did we get here, and how optimistic should anyone be when they hear, oh, a deal was proposed for Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan? Well, as you mentioned, no one in the administration would comment on these reported details of this swap. They wouldn't even acknowledge that it was a swap. There are reports I've been unable to confirm. We so far haven't confirmed that Victor Boot, the legendary infamous arms dealer, is being offered up. You know, we did hear the administration say they've put a significant offer in the table, even though they wouldn't say what that was. Now, I've been following this, as you mentioned, for months. And, and up until recently, what sources had told me is the Department of Justice had repeatedly said they were not willing to give up a prisoner of his history, someone, you know, he's called the Merchant of Death, the Lord of War. There was a Nicolas Cage movie made inspired by his life and misdoings that was not something, he was not someone the Department of Justice wanted to give up in any kind of trade because there were other Americans previously detained in Moscow. Trevor Reed, who was released in April due to his prisoner swap with um, a Russian pilot who was accused of smuggling drugs, and Paul Whelan, who's been there predating uh, Brittany Griner. So now you have these two high-profile Americans, and something in this calculation has changed. Although the White House wouldn't say what it was, they wouldn't say whether or not Victor Boot was part of that negotiation, they wouldn't even say that it was a prisoner swap. But uh, we heard John Kirby, the spokesperson, one of the spokespeople for the NSC, say, the president said a couple weeks ago, you know, figure out what it's going to take to get them home. So something changed a couple weeks ago, and it seems like there is more of an impetus to get this done, perhaps, perhaps over the objections of a lot of people of DOJ, although, like I said, we haven't been able to confirm that yet at this point. So WNBA star Brittany Griner's case certainly has gotten a lot more attention recently. Remind us of what landed Paul Whelan in a Russian prison and whether or not he, his family, is comfortable with sort of living in the shadow of Brittany Griner. Well, this has been a really frustrating dynamic, I think, for his family because 
you know, there's been a lot of criticism uh, with people who don't follow these cases quite as closely, saying that Brittany Griner wasn't getting enough attention and why wasn't the administration doing more to release her when, uh, you know, from my perspective as someone who watches these cases all around the world, because there are Americans wrongfully detained, uh, you know, in Iran, there are Americans wrongfully detained in Venezuela. This happens, the negotiations are happening all the time with various administrations. This is pretty standard, right? They go, especially in a country that doesn't have a justice system that really works in a way that we would say works. You know, about 99% of all people in Russia are convicted. You know, you go through the process. You go, you plead, there's a negotiation. This is pretty standard. So to see this outcry, I think, has been hard for a lot of these other hostage families who, you know, they look at people saying, why isn't this getting enough attention, and say, wait a minute, our loved ones have been detained far longer. We've been working on this case you know, many months and in some cases years, and this is getting a lot more attention. So it's a balancing act. However, if these two uh, wrongfully detained Americans, if their fate gets tied together and that gets Paul Whelan out of Moscow, then maybe in the end it turned out, I don't want to say to be a good thing, but it could benefit this family who's been really had a hard time. You know, he was accused of espionage and he's kind of been held up by Putin and by the administration as, you know, he's he's this American spy. We've got him. We've got him. So a source said to me today, look, Putin was going to have to get something really big to hand him over because he's gone so far out on this ledge claiming the U.S. says wrongfully that he was a spy. They had this, you know, uh, jump drive that they said they found in his luggage that contained classified documents. The U.S. says these are trumped up charges. Russia says they've caught this agent of espionage. So they had to, in the eyes of Putin, for the domestic audience, for domestic consumption, Putin was going to have to get something out of that. So this would be that something, right? If, if the U.S. was willing to turn over this arms dealer, that would be something that he could sell to a domestic audience. The question is, has that happened? And as we said, the White House and State Department have not yet confirmed that. And Christina, as you've explained, this is complicated and at times it's murky. Are we actually sure the Russians have identified Victor Bout as the person they most want in exchange for any sort of deal? I mean, the Russians have been asking for Victor Bout for years. Uh, I'm told, I've been told for years now, anytime there's a, you know, an American detained, anytime these conversations are broached, he's always someone they bring up. But until very recently, I was told that the response from the Department of Justice was almost always no. Other things were put on the table, and he was not. And that's because of his history, because of the danger he posed. Look, he is older now. He's been in custody for quite some time. The U.S. did get its win, right? They were able to, through a whole of government approach, find him, prosecute him, and put him in jail, maybe the calculation is he's not going to be able to travel, he's not going to be able to go to all these countries that have him on, you know, an Interpol list. Maybe he poses less of a threat now than he did 10, 5, even one year ago. I don't know. That calculation is something we're going to have to keep asking about. Um, but he is someone that the Russians have asked for and have wanted back for quite some time, so that would make sense. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said the public announcement about this deal is risky. Is there a fear of it backfiring somehow? These negotiations are always really risky, and you have to wonder where this information is coming from, because depending on where it comes from, you know, it could either be people trying to make sure this happens, it could be people trying to make sure this doesn't happen. Um, it's always really risky, and that's one of the issues with talking to these families who feel like they get frozen out, and this is not just something with this administration, this is something we've heard with the Obama administration, this is something we heard with the Trump administration. The families feel like they don't get enough attention, they don't get enough pressure, they don't get enough support. Whereas when you talk to the diplomats who are working behind the scenes with these detainees, they feel like they're doing everything they can, but public attention very rarely yields positive results in these kinds of situations. So it's a very delicate balancing act, especially when you're dealing with people as high profile as a WNBA star. Christina Ruffini, thank you so very much. Thanks, Major.